This week on Performance TV, Dave prepares for summer by installing new accessories on the Jeep. But before that, Robert learns how to safely stay buckled up for all your motorsports. All of this and more next on Performance TV. Welcome to Performance TV. Check out this machine. It's got a six liter LS engine in it pushing 650 horsepower. Today I've got Travis Lovett and Chad McDonald here to tell me about this car. How you doing guys? Doing good. Good, and you? Good. Hey Chad, can you tell me a little bit about this? Uh, this, is a, this is a Nick Sosby chassis. We're actually one of the sponsors for the Hitman Racing Team. Um, this buggy here is a 113 inch wheelbase, runs 14 bolts front and rear. It's actually one of the Probably one of the leading buggies on the market right now. Competitive, very, very competitive right now. Travis, what's it like to drive a beast like this? I love it. It's uh, very smooth, very fast, uh, adrenaline rush. You gotta have, you gotta wanna drive it to start with, but it's very adrenaline rushing like no other. Are you winning any races? That's Do the big question. Doing real good this year. Last year I did really good. I took home a big purse, 25,000, had a big race, and uh, she's doing real good. This is the cutting edge right now of the new rock bouncing buggies. Boy, this is something I'd love to drive someday if I ever have a chance. So, this is the seat that we've taken out of this car. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you'd like something maybe a little bit stronger, a little bit safer? Being at my age and doing what I'm doing, I was coming home on a Sunday, sore Monday, couldn't even make it to work. So, uh, Chad has actually brought a new seat to what helps me now, today, keep racing. Okay. And uh, that right there seems to be the old in the past now. Well, let's take a look at some of these new seats. Okay. Well, the seat that we have in mind from Travis is from ISP, and I've got Chris Van Gilder here today to tell me about it. Chris, why don't you tell me about this seat? Well, this seat's been designed through uh, the test labs. It's a little bit different theory on most of the other seat builders. We've done a lot of crash testing, and when you're moving, your, your probabilities of getting hurt is large. So the ideal is we want to contain you. Mm -hmm. And uh, this style seat here will, works best for Travis's application here in kill shot. And, um, as you can see, we're not using head supports, but we're using straps to contain the head. Okay. Shoulder supports, which controls the upper torso. And if you look at the side of the seat, there's a heavy structure put in there to help control the torso as far as your hip area. Okay. And tell me about some of these other seats you have sitting here. Well, the one thing we learned is my seat's only as good when you're in it. So seat belts are very important. Simpson is the one brand of seat belts that I've worked with. I have tested many different brands. Nobody outperforms Simpson products in the sled lab or static or dynamic testing. Um, they're top of the line as far as uh, the materials they use, and you can see it in their seat belts. You need a good helmet. You need a good head and neck device. And we have the suit also in the Hans. Difference is the Hans sits on your shoulder and attaches to the helmet, where the hybrid is actually worn by you. And it has double tether, so it actually helps in lateral movement. Okay, and so do you make seats just for one category of racing, or it seems like you've got a lot of different styles? No, basically when you stop fast, it doesn't matter what you're in. You still have to control the body and work with the body the same way. But basically, when we design a seat, we go through, we measure you up, we custom build a seat to fit you, so it's a perfect fit. Okay, and I noticed the SFI stickers. SFI is a safety standards institute, which basically uh, tests our seats, seat belts, fire suits, they're the ones that set the standards on how manufacturers have to build their product. The far seat I have down here is a, a, a NASCAR cup seat. The testing that that seat has to go through is very stringent and very harsh. Um, and it starts at SFI Labs and then goes to NASCAR. With the knowledge of being able to, to build that style seat, we keep that knowledge in all the seats that we build for whether it be a UTV, which we do a lot of razors and, and, and side-by-sides, rock bouncers, monster trucks. This is a, the red seat's a monster truck seat, but it's all about control. Um, if you stick the helmet inside that headrest, it'll hold it. You don't want to move. So the idea is to keep you secure and in your seat at all times. Correct. When the chassis stops moving, you want to stop moving. You don't want to start moving. Well, Chris, it sounds like you have most aspects of safety covered. For more information, go to ISPSeats.com. Now we'll be back with more Performance TV, but check this out first. Do you remember how all this stuff goes back together? I 
I thought that was your department. Yeah, it's a bunch of, <laughs> all right. That's why we need this week's Evaporust Tip, tip of, of the, the Week. week. Mm -hmm. You're right. This week we're going to talk about how to properly disassemble things and make sure you know where they came from. Mm -hmm. Like we've disassembled this and we have no idea where mm -hmm. everything goes. <laughs> but we should have followed our own tip. We should. Put the horn, we, this horn, we took pictures of before it came off the car. Mm -hmm. We marked what color it was, where it was hooked up to. Then we de-rusted it. And once we de-rust it, now we're going to spray it with rust block. Give it there a good coating. Go. Let it dry on there. Now. Yep. I'm going to take one of these tags over here and put some information on there about what kind of horn it is, color. And then we're going to throw it in the bag. Typically, this would be dry. dry but we're yes. going to drop it in. Drop it in. And we're going to wrap it up. All right. And how long will that be able to sit in the bag? That should be good for a year. OK, perfect. So now when we're ready to pull this part out, we simply pull it out, rinse it with water, dry it off, and we're ready to paint because we know where it came from, what model it came off of, where it came off on the car, uh -huh. and what color it should be. Perfect. Easy enough. If you have any more questions, visit our website at evaporus.com. Now we'll be back with more Performance TV right after this. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by EvapoRust, super safe rust remover. U.S. Specialty Vehicles, you know you want one. Machinist Mate, dedicated to bringing new revolutionary cleaning products to the market. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Performance TV. If you have a Jeep with a soft top, you know, you can't lock it up. So we've got the backbone here that's going to install and we're going to have a cargo that we can lock up. I've got Graham here from JeepBackbone.com. He's going to explain all of his accessories here. Well, the great thing about the backbone and why it was created, as you just said, anybody that owns a Jeep that has a soft top or no top, there's no place to lock anything up. The great thing about the backbone is the ease of installation, the amount of security it provides, it's water resistant, and it's easy to take on and off. We've got three pieces. We've got a back deck, a middle deck, and a down piece that actually goes down behind the rear seats, so it completely encloses that rear area. Um, another great thing about the backbone is this is all the hardware you're looking at. It's all 7 16 so a 7 16 ratchet along with a pair of pliers, you're good to go. We also have some gasket material. This has a pressure sensitive uh, backing. You simply peel it off. It only goes in one place. We've got two on each side. We've got one for the tailgate and then we've got one for in between the support tubes and then we're ready to do the install. Once you get the backbone installed, then you can start adding our accessories. We've got the cargo carrier, which is a tubular product that fits on top. So now you can utilize all that extra cargo area on top of the backbone, which is really cool. Then we've got rear windows, both for the two-door and four-door. We've got front and rear light bars that can also be an adventure rack for watercraft. Great. Well, I can't wait till we install this. Awesome. Let's get on it. We're going to go ahead and install our backbone now. I've got Hunter here helping me out. Graham, what's the first thing we want to do, though, before we start installing? Well, David, to prepare the Jeep, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fold the back seats down if you're installing on a four-door. If you have a two-door, TJ, LJ, or JK, you're going to want to remove the bench seat. If you have a soft top installed, remove all the soft top windows, and then you're going to want to take these back pillars, just disengage them and put them up on top, get all them right. out of the way. Then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install the middle deck first. It's the largest piece. Okay. You can do it by yourself, but we recommend using two people because it's just kind of awkward. You've got to yeah, insert it between the roll bar and your plastic door surrounds. I see. So you just slide it through and then just set it down on the tub of the Jeep. David, now that we've got the middle deck in, we're going to install this down piece that goes down behind the rear seats. All right. It's Make tongue and groove, so you just want to lift up on one side. Okay. And then once you get it started, it just it should slide right in. And then once you get that started, just start tightening those bolts. All right. And those just go finger tight, huh? Finger tight, exactly. Dave, the last piece is the back deck. Okay. I wanted to take a minute to show you these levers that we've created. There's no bolts or anything visible from the top side of the backbone. Right. There's four of these levers that slide up under the frame of the Jeep, and when you actuate this bolt, 
That's what holds everything down to the top of the Jeep. Very creative and we're real proud of it. So now what we do is we just take this back piece and just line it up with the roll bars. Okay. Slide it forward. And we're good to go. All right, David, so now that we've got the back deck on, we've lined up the aluminum with the new gaskets that we have. Right. Everything's put together. The only last piece are five bolts that go in between the support tubes underneath. Five of those, 7 16th inch ratchet and wrench, and we're done with the installation. That's great. This C channel here, uh -huh. that's where our window attaches. We're the only company on the market that has a window that wraps around and totally encloses the rear section right up behind the back seats. All right, we're going to go ahead and button all of this up, and then we'll come back and show you how it looks. But first, take a look at this. Hey, Tommy, what do you have for us this week on the Z-Max Micro Lubricant Minute? We're going to talk about the Z-Max engine formula and what it does for your engine. Now, a lot of people think it's an oil additive. Z-Max is not an oil additive. It uses your oil as a transport, a carrier, to get it to the metal parts of your engine because it's a metal treatment, not a oil additive or oil treatment. Exactly, because even when you shut your engine off and it's, it's been sitting there or whatever, the oil is all drained back into the pan. But the Z-Max is still doing its job because what does Z-Max do? It penetrates the metal. Yeah, it stays with the metal. Now, a lot of people ask, what's Z-Max do for the engine? Well, it's going to reduce the carbon buildup, all the, the sludge in your engine. That's going to rob power. It's going to make your engine not perform better. So it's going to be more efficient. It's going to get a better mileage. It's going to be better power because it, it doesn't make horsepower. It maintains horsepower by letting the valve seal. You're not going to get the carbon buildup where you're getting a little valve leakage. Right. The valve is going to seal. It's going to make maximum horsepower like it was brand new. It's also going to treat all the metal parts in your engine. Everything from the camshaft to the bearings to the lifters. It's going to keep all that functioning like it's a brand new engine. That's right, and we want to make things last longer. And, and Z-Max is something that you just don't use it once, but you don't have to use it like every week. Right. They recommend around 6,000 miles, so every time you change your oil, you might throw in Z-Max because it's gonna, gonna deteriorate over time. It's not gonna last forever. Right. And you wanna keep that engine lubed up. You call it a wet finish. Your oil won't stick to the metal. It doesn't go, it doesn't, it makes it perform better because it has a smooth surface. Because the porosity of the metal, we're gonna fill that. We're gonna penetrate it with Z-Max, make the thing perform. There you go. And if you wanna find out more about Z-Max, all you have to do is hop on their website at zmax.com. Well, we've got our backbone all installed and it looks sweet. Yeah, David, thanks for having us. You know, whether you're rolling with 42s with a three inch lift or a stock Jeep rolling right out of the dealership, if you have a soft top or no top, you really need the security for a backbone. Yeah, you sure do. Now, if I want to find out more information, where do I go? JeepBackbone.com. Great, great. I really appreciate you coming in. We'll be back with more Performance TV in just a minute. Performance TV, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know, I've heard a lot about AP Laser. I've got Kyle Hinkson here from AP Laser to talk to me about this machine. I'm absolutely fascinated by its versatility. Kyle, what can you tell me? Absolutely. Not only is it cool, I'm actually going to start it up right now, but not only is it cool to discuss lasers just because lasers are cool, but our machine's one of a kind. We've actually got a patented design where we can split the machine in two. Now, unlike a traditional laser machine where you're going to be limited to the box, you can only do small, lightweight stuff. With our machine, not only can you do that, but you can, like I said, break it in two and bring out the big items, like the doors, car doors, tables, you name it, any size, any weight. That's really incredible. So I could have an idea in my head, come to you, buy a machine like this, and go into business tomorrow. Pretty much. We'll, we'll, uh, it's a turnkey package. So we provide you with the computer, we provide you with the software, all the accessories, three-year warranty, training, on-site installation. It's a complete setup, and it's only 110 volt, too. So literally, like you said, you can just plug it right in the wall and get started. That's amazing. I can yeah. just plug it right in the wall. Yeah. So tell me about all the different types of opportunities that this machine creates. It's pretty cool because we'll talk to somebody who's in one particular industry, and then they'll kind of figure out, well, hey, this machine can do this, this, and this by a customer coming in and asking an off-the-wall request, and then they'll talk to us and be like, hey, well, can I do this? And it's not a problem. We've been able to do um, just about any market, any material, um, and again, any size, any weight. 
Wow, that's fantastic. Let's go over here and take a look at some of the stuff that you brought for us. Yeah, we were having fun last week. So one of the big things that's been a big trend right now is these Yeti mugs. So, and it can go for any industry. You could be a funeral home, you could be an auto body shop, it doesn't matter. These things are awesome because our machine will come with the rotary attachment. What you can do is, again, you can just set it up on the rotary, put any logo on there, set it up, and they're selling these $30 per mug engraved. Holy cow, yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Tell me about some of this other stuff. I see a $100 bill here. So this was kind of demonstrating that we can obviously take a, a Photoshop element and we can place whatever photos or designs we want to do. And this was actually done as a reverse engrave and then we cut out the material as well. So this is showing our multi-layer engraving where again, in one press of a button, I can have a, a finished product from the machine. I see you have a belt here, so even articles of clothing. Articles of clothing, any leather, any of our woodworkers, leather workers, uh, any clothing. We've done shirts, tablecloths, um, jackets, you name it, socks. Well, I see the 3D deer down at the bottom of the bench here. That's pretty incredible. This is where it's really cool because a lot of people think lasers and they think 2D, which is kind of the case here, but what we did is we took 2D and we built 3D. So uh, basically we pick up our file, we'll cut out the individual pieces and I'm gonna build my 3D model. Same thing with the car here. This was done out of acrylic, but you'll kind of see too, I actually went up and did that multi-layer engraving again where I added text effect to it and design effect to it before cutting it out. And then when I build my model, I have my finished race car. <laughs> That's incredible. Tell me, what's the strangest thing you've ever heard somebody ask for? I don't think I can say that on TV, but we've done, uh, the smallest things we've done is like a peanut. Hmm. Um, but the largest things we've done is a full size war memorial. So like a, a 10,000 pound stone. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So you can engrave granite. Yep. Wow. Gr granite, marble, bricks, metal, any any material. I think this is absolutely fascinating. What are you making for us today? So we're going to do, uh, on a piece of wood here, we're running a, uh, a bald eagle, basically. We're going to engrave a bald eagle into the wood, and it's going to go through the paint, and it's going to give us a nice, uh, nice finished product when we're done. Boy, I'm going to have to send you some files to print for me. Though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have fun with that. All right. So I understand you actually have a smaller portable machine, too. We do. We actually have several different sizes available. Um, our entry-level model is actually the 1812, so it's an engraving area of 18 inches by 12 inches. Okay. It's got 40 watts of power. Now, what that's going to do for you is give you a little bit different cutting and engraving capabilities. But then the next size up is 80 watts, and we go all the way up to a 100 watt machine like this one right here. Wow. Now again, all of our machines have that patented design, so they can all split. And even if it has a small engraving area, you can still do larger pieces. You just have to section it together, basically. So tell me, 40 watts, 80 watts, 100 watts, what's that going to do to my power bill? Do I need a new electrical box? No, believe it or not, this uses about as much energy as your refrigerator. And like I said, it's only 110 volt, and I would recommend a 20 amp breaker. That's really all you need to do. OK, the machine just beeped. Can we take a look yeah, at what Yeah, let's take a look us? here. Oh yeah, that looks really good. That's amazing. Now again, that did a cut and an engrave. That's very cool. Hey, for more information, go to aplaser.com. Now stay tuned, we'll be back right after this. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by ZMAX, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Tire stickers, creative dynamic expression. And by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Welcome back to Performance TV. If you've got a diesel truck that's got a couple hundred thousand miles on it, things might be starting to go a little wicky on you. That's why we've got Mike here from DieselDIY.com to help us out. Last time you were here, you showed us an excellent way to save a ton of money on a crack cylinder head. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, a common problem that we're finding with higher mileage engines is that, that they uh, crack on the injector bore where the fuel passage is, and then that fuel being under higher pressure than the cooling system pushes fuel into the cooling system. Uh -huh. We've come up with a solution where we actually make a sleeve that goes into the bore for the injector and a different body that goes on the bottom of the injector, and uh, essentially it makes a permanent fix, so you no, no longer have to have a worry about the leak. Uh, I see that you've got a new tool here for us. What does this tool do for us? Um, <clears throat> what this tool is, is there's a high pressure oil system that uh, uses the engine oil inside the engine under hydraulic pressure hmm. to compress fuel inside the injectors. On this engine, it goes in the top of the injector. How we do it is, is we, have, we remove the high pressure oil regulator from the engine and then insert the tool in its place. And as you can see, we have one inserted and by pressurizing the system, you listen for an audible leak, and then you just chase the audible leak until you find it. 
if my oil is leaking, what, what kind of problem is that going to give me if it's just going back into the engine? The majority of the time, it's a hot no start. So the oil is hot, viscosity is lower, and the leak on top of it is going to give me a hard start problem, yep. and this is going to find my leak. Yes. Okay, so we've already screwed it on there, and so we just hook up our air line and uh, let the air in and yep. see for, listen for leaks, huh? Yep. Okay. Let's see. And then turn the valve. Yep. And I can just leave that like that. Yep. Some some small leaks will take an area of 10 to 15 minutes before you'll uh, begin to hear the uh, air coming out of it. Um, you can listen through the crankcase ventilation hole on the driver's side valve cover, and you can remove the oil cap on the passenger side valve cover. It'll give you an idea of which side of the engine it's coming from. If you have a Set the same sound coming from both sides is more than likely coming from the center of the engine. Uh, is there anything tricky to this? Do I need any special tools? Uh, there is a couple special tools you'd need uh, to, to remove the regulator out of it. There's a socket that you'd need. That's um, pretty common, right? Yeah. I mean, you can get it anywhere. Um, actually, there's starting to be quite a few uh, parts stores now, so. But and this is we... not in a parts store. That's only available if I go to dieseldiy.com? Yes. And then you have another website I can go to, too? Yes, AccurateDiesel.com. AccurateDiesel.com. So uh, we're not hearing anything. We don't have any leaks in this system? Or do we need to wait longer? Or uh, Like I say, a small leak will take a few minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to uh, up here. Okay, so we need to let our Large pressure leaks, kind of you'll up. hear them right away. Right off the bat? Yep. Huh. Well, I really like your system. Now, if I didn't have this, what would I have to do? Um, there is other ways of pressurizing through the sensor, <clears throat> which require a scan tool to, to operate the um, pressure regulator, but it never fully seals the system off. This way you're 100% sure when you're done you don't have a leak. Um, if you're doing any other repairs of the motor that aren't even leak related, let's say you've done head gaskets or you change injectors, um, by using this tool after you're done you can ensure that there's no leak and that you're not going to have the vehicle come back. Hmm. Well, there you have it. If you need to look for an oil leak on your Ford, you need to get this part. You need to talk to Mike at DieselDIY.com. Well, that's all we've got this week. We'll see you next week here on Performance TV.